Swedish Talk Entertainment. Share and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. This is Rob. This video, we're going to do a spoiler-free review of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yes. <laughs> now, before seeing this movie, I had some reservations because we saw a lot in the trailers. I, now, just to set the record straight, I liked the first Amazing Spider-Man. I did. I liked it a lot. I liked it a great deal. Not saying that it's better than Sam Raimi's trilogy. Uh, I, to me, they're two different entities, both of which I have adored. I adored that trilogy with the exception of the third movie. And so far, after the, seeing the first Amazing Spider-Man, I am very much on board with this one. This second one, though, I went in with a lot of concerns because, number one, the trailers were very saturated. Number two... The reviews leading up to this point where I've seen the movie have not been favorable. With that said, um, I have a completely different opinion on what the reviewers say, and I completely disagree with a lot of them. Uh, this movie was very good. I thought it was very good. Now, it doesn't mean it doesn't have its flaws, and we're going to go over those first. First thing is, is that you do see most of the action sequences in the trailers. You do. Um, there are some action sequences you see that are not in the trailer, and that's fine. That you know, those were very good as well. Electro is a villain that has a much different—I wouldn't say a much different motivation than I think what most of the viewers are, are used to. It actually kind of reminds me a lot of Jim Carrey's Riddler in Batman Forever. Not to say that he's goofy like that, but. The motivation for Edward Nygma in that movie was he was obsessed with Batman. He wanted to be better than Batman. Very similar in this one in terms of the Electro and, and what his motivation is. Uh, it's very conflicted. Both him and Goblin are not the focal point of this movie. Like, even though they're the big villains, they're not the focal point. Now, that doesn't sound very appealing on the outset. In fact, even me, when I heard that in some of the reviews, I was like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. What they presented in this movie, and yes, it is a movie that all in all... And the long run is setting up a series of movies. That has been another big criticism of some of the critics that have reviewed it. But that to me is a very poor, poor excuse to give it a bad rating. Because that's what every superhero movie is doing. So why is it that Marvel's universe, like the Avengers and Iron Man and Captain America, they get no criticism for setting up movies, but suddenly Amazing Spider-Man does? So... You know, I, I don't I, I don't count that as a criticism. If the movie is telling a solid story, and it's solid, it's not the greatest story, it's, it's superhero stuff. It's the same stuff we've seen time and time again. In fact, the premise of this story is no different than the premise of any of the other Spider-Man movies, or the, the premise of any other superhero movie for that matter. So, and that's another a criticism that I've seen, and it's like... I can't take any critic seriously that's criticizing a movie for doing something that other movies are getting praised for. It just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me. This movie is very solid. In my opinion, it's much better than the first one. Well, I wouldn't say much better. It is better than the first one. Uh, I can't really gauge how much better. Action-wise, substantially better. Story-wise, it to me, it's a continuation. You get some, some questions answered that, to me, were pre pretty pr uh, pivotal. Uh, questions that were left from the first movie that are answered in this movie, and to me, that is continuing a story. That is telling a tale, and it's a very interesting story. In fact, there's some little minor twists, nothing that's groundbreakingly shocking, but there's some things in there that you could see how they build a conflict with Spider-Man and one of the enemies in terms of uh, how they kind of coexist. It's it's hard to explain without spoiling it, and I'll, I'll talk about it more in detail in my spoiler review, but and that's going to continue on. That conflict is... This set up that big conflict. So, you know... I mean, some people are really, really... Another criticism I've heard is the love story with him and Gwen Stacy. You know what? Again, it's the same thing that happened in the Raimi series. So why are we any surprised here? This is one of the things that happened in the Spider-Man comics. So I don't understand what the criticism is there either. In the comic, he had many love interests... In uh, the Raimi series, uh, Mary Jane was his, obviously his love interest for pretty much the whole trilogy. So why that's getting criticized now is beyond me as well. I, I don't know, you know, I know people, maybe they want to see something completely different. They did what every comic book movie or every movie that does, any movie that's based on a book or a comic or anything else, they did what every other movie does, which is for the most part, meet in the middle. They made it geared towards a general audience and they will take 
the hardcore people that will love it and the hardcore people they will hate it they will split them so at the end they win they get the general audience and they either get one side of the hardcore or another side of the hardcore either way the you know so overall i thought it was a fantastic movie i really enjoyed it i was very surprised i wasn't going in expecting to hate it don't get me wrong I was going in with lowered expectations because of what I've been reading, but what I saw and what I read does not make any sense to me. Um, you know, criticizing it for setting up more movies, that to me is, it, that doesn't make any sense because every superhero movie does that. Criticizing the love angle, well, you got that in Raimi series as well, so what's, what's the criticize there? Um, even if you, you know, the only thing you could criticize, I, and I would say this, number one, you did get all the scenes in the trailers pretty much for the action. I would say you got about 70% of the action sequences in the trailers. The relationship between Harry and, uh, the relationship between Harry Osborn and Peter Parker is very, very much crushed here, in my opinion, because they don't, for, you know, it's weird, for a, a movie that was over two hours, they didn't really utilize the time well enough to to build a stronger bond with those two it's okay if they had if if they were you know they they threw in the story that obviously and this is not a big spoiler because pretty much everybody knows this they threw in the story that obviously harry osborne uh, comes back into the fold and they were friends as kids and they're still they obviously still know each other and that's fine you can do that in a in a movie but if you're going to plan it in a series i think they should have kind of touched on that in the first one and then elaborate on it here where in this movie it kind of feels like it comes out of nowhere and then they don't spend enough time together for them to really to, to really feel that impact of the rivalry at the point in which they finally meet as goblin and spider-man but i mean with that said now in terms of electro electro is a very very uh, interesting first of all very powerful i mean man he was i mean no joke how he was developed was very cliche. No different than... In fact, it reminded me a lot of Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, how that created. The only difference is he fell in a tank of water, Green Goblin was in, you know, the nanites and all that stuff. Uh, but it was very similar. But again, at the end of the day, it was a good movie. It was very, very good. It's not nearly as bad as critics are making it out to be. I think... And this is brings to my next point. What I'm starting to find now is, unless you watch a critic on TV, and, and even then... I mean, critics, are, they're all opinionated at the end of the day. But I find that lately a lot of critics like to give negative reviews to big movies like this because, let's face it, and I, I, hate, to, I hate to say it, but this is, to me, this is how I see it. Negativity draws more audience. It does. It, it, negativity draws more viewers. If you crush a Spider-Man movie review, you're going to get more attention from the Spider-Man crowd than the person who's going to do a good review because the Spider-Man crowd is going to be so pissed. They're going to be flaming you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Each flame cause, you know, is a hit or a view or you know, a like or a dislike. It, just, it makes you trend. It makes you relevant. So I'm kind of questioning, questioning some of the integrity of other critics because you, you can't criticize a movie for doing something that you know, is, first of all, to me, was while not exactly like the comic was very close to the comic, okay? And, you know, if you're not going to criticize other movies for doing this, then I don't think it's fair to criticize this one. That's just my opinion. But anyway, guys, overall, look, you're going to have your opinion as well. This is mine. This is my opinion. I thought it was a good movie. I liked it better than the first one. The music was fantastic. It was better than the first one as well. Uh, Hans Zimmer really stepped it up in this one. Uh, the action sequences were very entertaining. The CGI was completely fine. Uh, Electro... And Goblin, I'll get into that a little bit more in the spoilers. I, I don't want to bring out too much here. But overall, I enjoyed it. I had a good time. It, two hours and 20 minutes went by really quick. And I saw a fairly, you know, almost 8 o'clock showing. So uh, it was good. It was good. And there was some some pretty emotional moments for, you know, for people who, who don't know certain things. Uh, very, very emotional moments. So... Uh, but that's it, guys. I mean, I, I think Spider-Man was a perfectly fine movie. It was very enjoyable. I thought the story is like a comic book story. That's You're getting a comic book story. That's what it is. Is, is it fantastic and groundbreaking? No, it's not. No comic book movie is. I thought it was a better story than Avengers, and everybody raved about Avengers. And when you really think about it, as much as I love Avengers, it was a simpleton movie. There's nothing crazy about that. So this, to me, was a better story. Now, I'm not saying it's a better movie. Obviously, when you get that many heroes together, it just makes it epic. There's no way you could top that. But in terms of story, I thought it was great. It was better than Avengers. So it, I, I can't. I got to be fair. I can't criticize a movie for doing something that other movies do. All the comic book movies are doing this. And if you're not going to smash Marvel for their whole uh, phase one, if you're not going to smash the first Raimi series for some of the things they did that were done in this movie, I can't kill them for that. 
I can't. I can't kill him for that. Anyway, guys, this is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do news. We just talk entertainment. Take it easy. Thank you for watching ETN. Don't forget to subscribe and join the Nation Facebook page. You're watching ETN, where we don't do news. We just talk entertainment. Share and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. This is Rob. This video, we're going to do a spoiler-free review of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yes. <laughs> now, before seeing this movie, I had some reservations because we saw a lot in the trailers. I, now, just to set the record straight, I liked the first Amazing Spider-Man. I did. I liked it a lot. I liked it a great deal. Not saying that it's better than Sam Raimi's trilogy, uh, I, to me, they're two different entities, both of which I have adored. I adored that trilogy with the exception of the third movie. And so far, after the, seeing the first Amazing Spider-Man, I am very much on board with this one. This second one, though, I went in with a lot of concerns because, number one, the trailers were very saturated. Number two, the reviews leading up to this point where I've seen the movie have not been favorable. With that said, um, I have a completely different different opinion on what the reviewers say, and I completely disagree with a lot of them. Uh, this movie was very good. I thought it was very good. Now, it doesn't mean it doesn't have its flaws, and we're going to go over those first. First thing is, is that you do see most of the action sequences in the trailers. You do. Um, there are some action sequences you see that are not in the trailer, and that's fine. That, you know, those were very good as well. 